So what was the avatar and what has it changed? Or at least your perfect marketing uh, person, who was it and how would you explain it? Well, um, to be honest with you, I never really put my, my finger on it. it. It changed a lot. I changed my style and my approach quite a bit mm -hmm. to try to find where my work was going to land properly, you know, and who it was going to land with. Uh, so it was, you know, I had a, a certain age bracket. It would be men and women within sort of, you know, 25 to 45 years. They work in a job that gives them anywhere between 50 to, say, $100,000 a year. They love creative things. So they go out to concerts and they go out to art galleries and they're involved with, you know, culture in some way. Perhaps their, their work is in uh, video or television or something like that. You know, they have a creative mm -hmm. pursuit that they do. Um, so on and so forth. I went down all these lists and you, you write out all the demographics and you write out all the, all the hobbies and how many, I didn't get quite as far as, you know, uh, putting them in a house and how many kids do they have and do, are they dog people or they right. cat people, so on and so forth, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I went through that and kind of, a lot of them ended up looking quite a bit like me. You know, I, mm -hmm. I love this stuff and I'm into, you know, horror films and I like uh, creative board games and I like uh, all kinds of, you know, bright colors and different things like this. So I was modeling quite a bit of my audience on myself and I still haven't really been able to tap into finding those people where they are. And, um, and it has, I, I've been lucky in one respect that uh, not only did I have that opportunity to sell those two pieces to that gentleman in Italy, yeah. but I've got one super fan in Quebec, which is the province just oh. above us. And uh, he's purchased two dozen pieces of mine over the year. Do you know how we found you? I have no, I, I think I met him at the Montreal Comic Con. Oh, okay. Uh, like five years ago, again, five or six years ago, there was one gentleman who kept coming back to the table that I had there and picking up small pieces off my table. And he bought about six six of my small um, mixed media pieces. Really? And yeah, this gentleman, he's uh, he's purchased he, like consistently every month or every other month, he'll drop a couple thousand or even $3,000 on four, five, six pieces of mine. And uh, I ship them out and away they go. And he's been, he's really been like my angel investor this year. Yeah. Without his assistance, without his, his fandom, I would be destitute at the moment. I'd be having serious money problems. Yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, if I had four of him, I'd be fine. I, I'd be working in my basement every day, painting new stuff and, and not worrying about it. I'd be trying to make as much stuff to ship out as possible. Uh -huh. But uh, he's been the only one that I've really been able to, grab a hold of and see consistent uh, sales through. And um, yeah, it's sort of, it's been one of those, it's been one of those years. It's kind of good and bad. I've got a great super fan, but I've only got one. Yeah. You know, uh, and I've been able to sell some of this. So some of us yeah. don't have any, mister. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and it's fine. It, you know, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking it. Don't I know you're not. Me. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's tough. It's tough. And of course, you know, the, the current climate with COVID-19 and everything getting shut and so on and so forth really hasn't helped. Yeah. So I was really, uh, the whole Shopify thing that you mentioned, I was really into that at the beginning of the year. Uh, I was meeting with a lot of people from that, from that program and we were actually setting up a storefront. We had been given a, a storefront in a local mall for six months. They were going to give it to us for, for us uh, rent free. As long as we set up a whole sh crew of Shopify people inside the store to sell oh. and to bring new clients to the mall. Is there so, like a Shopify located where you live or something like that? Like one of their headquarters, is it there? Because, I, yeah. okay, there is. I was going to say, because when I talked to you last time, it seemed like you had a lot more access to it than people that I've known in the past that have used Shopify. Yeah, so. I'm lucky in the fact that there's one in Waterloo, which is just up the street from us. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff right here. I mean, Cambridge, where I'm at, is is nicely located in between a lot of big major cities. And then just on our doorstep uh, in Waterloo is a huge tech hub and business hub. There's all kinds of stuff going on there all the time. Okay. And, um, you know, yeah, Shopify is part of that. 
So we had all this stuff planned. You know, we were going to open up a storefront, and I'd be able to market my artwork there, and 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 any all these other merchants were going to be there. And then COVID nineteen came along. That got stopped. All the shops got shut because everything got shut down. Yeah. And we haven't looked at it since because we haven't been able to. You know, we can't. We can't do it. Um, and then, of course, that led to everything else that I had in the fire, all the open, sh all the art shows, all the live events, uh, even marketing, some marketing that I had in other events that were going to go on, but I wasn't going to be there. That got canceled. Everything done. Right. <laughs> come, come the end of March, everything was shut. Everything was shuttered. It was, uh, it, I'd be really curious to see where I'd be right now if all of that had gone through. You know? Yeah. Well, how would you adjusted? So that happens, of course, and it's horrible. And we've all experienced it, and we've all yeah. then gone eventually gone. Yes, we do have to switch. So what did you do to adjust to that? A lot of it became, of course, um, the only avenue of tech then is, of course, to go digital and to go online as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, I I did that. I sort of shifted my focus away from physical events to more either online events of which I haven't really had a lot of opportunity to get involved with yet. Or um, it was, you know, re retooling my website and making it more user-friendly and then putting together proper newsletters and all kinds of marketing materials and things of that nature. So it was getting diving deeper into my website and support for it and the newsletter that would hopefully grow my, my following and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm.